Israel Highness Prince Sher Hassan bin Tarar of Jordan, Heads of United Nations International Scientific Organizations, Mr. Malani, Chairman of the Abdul Salam International Center for Theoretical Physics, ICTP, Professor Fernando Quevedo, Director of ICTP, Mr. Mario Giro, Under Secretary of State, Minister of Foreign Affairs, Civic and Political Authorities of Trieste, Nobel laureates, distinguished scientists, and the staff of ICTP, Abdul Salam family present here, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. I would like to thank Professor Quevedo for the invitation to join you in marking this important anniversary, and congratulations. I won't go deep into some of the these areas, but I want to state that uh, it, is ta it takes scientists to study and understand more deeply science, but it takes all of us to know and understand the importance of science as many fields associated with that affect our lives every day. And like you, we in Rwanda are working all the time and following your lead to find ways of improving humanity's well-being. Very importantly, among others, through science, technology, mathematics, and we always seek to understand more and better. For 50 years, the Abu Salam International Center for Theoretical Physics has been at the forefront of scientific cooperation with the developing world. Thousands of young scientists from Africa, Asia, and Latin America have benefited from ICTP's programs. In fact, of the first postgraduate students at ICTP in 1964, one was an African, Professor Daniel Kimpong of Uganda. The tools pioneered at ICTP, which have since been adopted more widely, aimed to stem the brain drain by bringing young scientists from developing countries into top-notch research networks. This made the beneficiaries better able to build scientific communities in their own countries and help to reduce the isolation that caused precious talent to be wasted. The ICTP's strategy also recognized that at the end of the day, what is important is to use science to speed up social and economic transformation in the developing world. So from the beginning, ICTP has maintained a research agenda that prioritizes topics of particular relevance outside the industrialized nations. By attracting prestige and funding to such questions, the ICTP and institutions like it enable a scientist from Africa to make important contribution back home, even as she pursues her career in the world's leading laboratories. In this way, the problem of brain drain can be turned in a part into an opportunity. In this connection, I would like to applaud a new research program recently inaugurated at ICTP on energy and sustainability. Research on green energy offers the greatest promise 
of breaking the current political stalemate on climate change. Scientific discoveries are already closing the gap between renewable energy and fossil fuels in terms of cost. We continued, with continued effort, we will no longer have to face a choice between the environment and economic growth. The significance of this anniversary goes beyond the mission of ICTP, which is physics. This is because its founding soon attracted here to Trieste many other institutions dedicated to scientific cooperation with the developing world, renewing this city's vocation as an international center of knowledge. This Trieste system, as it came to be known, is a unique ecosystem whose wider impacts deserve to be better understood so that it can be emulated and scaled up. Securing long-term funding for these initiatives was and remains a challenge. The strong support over the decades from the Italian government and the key UN agencies, notably UNESCO and the IAEA, must be acknowledged, and all that is well appreciated. In this context, the Italian government's recent decision to focus its relationship with Africa on scientific cooperation can only be welcomed and applauded. This anniversary is also an occasion to reflect on the vision of the ICTP's founders, Abdul Salam and Paolo Budinich, so that we can recommit ourselves to deepening it in the years ahead. I have in mind, in particular, the human and moral factors that motivated these two engaged scientists. But first, allow me to say a few words about what this topic means to us in my country. In Rwanda, we put science at the very center of our national development strategy starting from 1997, when urgent questions of national reconstruction still of necessity consumed almost all of our attention. But it was clear even then that our pathway to prosperity lay in investing in the productive capabilities of our people, which till then had not been given adequate attention. Our attachment to scientific exchange goes beyond that. However, our tragic history had nearly robbed us of our dignity and the necessary work of national renewal sought to restore it. Connecting our young people to the scientific mindset not only makes them effective workers, we believe it can also help them be better citizens. In this regard, the ICTP's commitment to establish its East African Regional Center in Rwanda is most welcome, great practical and symbolic, symbolic example and of importance to us as a nation. We look forward to working together with the rest of the region and the ICTP to make this venture a success. You can count on our strong support. The values that animate scientific inquiry are the same, are the same as those that animate our struggle in Rwanda for prosperity. Reason, truth, a hunger for practical solutions, 
and ultimately a principle of the rejection of the arbitrary and irrational division that has caused so much destruction across the world. The effort that began with the founding of ICTP 50 years ago goes to the heart of the most profound divide between the developing and the developed worlds. Recognition of one of our common dignity. On this point, I cannot do better than to quote Paolo Budinich himself, who said, the goal is not only to provide scientists with the skills and the training that they need to participate effectively in the global scientific community, but also to instill the sense of dignity and the confidence that they must have to build their own scientific communities. The work that Abdul Salam and Paul Budinich started here in 1964 is far from complete. Indeed, it has never been more urgent. The world today is more interconnected and interdependent than ever before. Global problems can originate from anywhere, but so can solutions to those problems. That is the promise of ICT's next 50 years, which it is up to us to seize. I thank you so much for your kind attention. <laughs>